Hello everybody, my name is Grant Rivers and today I'm gonna to be talking with you about 10 things that you can do right now that are gonna help you go Division I. But before we jump into the list that I've compiled for you, I should probably tell you a couple things just so that you know I'm not some random guy giving you advice on the internet. I competed in the ACC for five and a half years at North Carolina State University under Raleigh Geiger, who is one of the, if not the longest tenured head coach in Division I. Also, I trained under Tamara Ards, who is one of the current sprint coaches at Louisiana State University. LSU. I also trained under Alan Johnson, who's multiple time world champion and Olympic champion. Also, I, I believe he had a couple world records. I don't know. I'm going to have to fact check myself on that. And then finally, I trained under my specific coach, Thomas Earl Wood. He's been at NC State for 20 years. He's been coaching throws and multis. He's had, I mean, multiple All-Americans. Really, all the coaches that I just mentioned have had multiple ACC champions, national champions, and I believe some of them have actually had Olympians as well. I know Gabriella Cunningham in particular just went to the Olympics this year for NC State, a really good friend of mine, and trains under Alan Johnson. Now that we have all of those kind of credential things out of the way, how do you know that you can trust me in particular in terms of the advice that I give you? Well, one, I've gone to Vision One. Two, I have the NC State school record for the men's heptathlon. I am a ACC champion in 2019. Also, I am a uh, four-time national record holder for Bermuda. I won multiple state championships in, in high school, and kind of the list goes on. So, tip number one. I know a lot of people tell you to email coaches, which is very good. That's important for you to do. Definitely make sure that you are reaching out to coaches, but one thing that they kind of gloss over is the fact that you can reach out to Division I athletes on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, any of their social media handles. I know me in particular, I've had multiple people reach out to me either to ask me questions about this topic or just to see if I had some connections that they could go through to give themselves a better chance of getting that Division I scholarship. And yes, absolutely, I do have connections. I know people who are Olympians. I know people who have succeeded at the highest level and most Division I athletes do. So number one, reach out to and, and make relationships with these people who are currently doing the very thing that you want to do. Tip number two, performance is everything in track and field. Whenever it comes to numbers and heights and distances and all those things, make sure that your performance is up to the caliber of the division one level. I know multiple people who never won a state championship, even though that does help to, to get you recruited. I know people who never won a national championship coming out of high school. But one thing that's always consistent with Division I athletes is that they are typically in the top 10 or top eight in their state for the event that they compete in. Most of these individuals are able to compete in multiple events because typically coaches don't just want you to be like a one trick pony. They want you to be able to do a bunch of different things. So it's really important that you're a diverse athlete and that you're someone who, let's say you can long jump and high jump, or let's say that you can do the hurdles and run the hundred. So a lot of coaches are gonna be looking for that versatility that you offer. And, and it really is important that you're kind of dipping your toes and your feet into multiple events. So number two, keep in mind, performance is everything. You wanna try to be in the top 10 in, in the state. You wanna try to be at least in the top 20 to 25 in the nation for your event. And that typically will get you 50% scholarship to 25% scholarship. If you're in the top five in the state, top five in the nation, typically that'll get you 75% to 100%. But not everybody's gonna be able to do that. So just be keeping in mind that you need to be somewhere in those ranges if you're looking for scholarships at the division one level. Something a lot of people don't know, and it's a, one of those well-kept secrets in division one athletics is there are people on Division I rosters who are more so there to raise the team's GPA because they're academically inclined than they're necessarily on the team to become an All-American, go to national championships, go to conference championships, and things like that. And you might ask yourself, hmm, that's weird. I would think that every single person on a Division I roster is there just for the sport. 
but that's not necessarily true. You're always going to have cases in some Division One programs that, let's say, are not consistently in the top 10 in the country. They are trying to fill their roster spots, and they know that obviously they've given out the majority of their quarter full half scholarships to those athletes that are coming out of high school, top in the country, things like that. So for those individuals who are more academically inclined, they can walk onto the program, they can actually uh, find themselves on the roster and do really well. I've actually seen people who are more academically inclined and come in with less accolades coming out of high school and who do better than the multiple time high school national champions, multiple time state champions, things like that. It just depends on the individual and how driven driven you are and you know just how much heart you you really have. Some people just develop in their athletic career later on and that's why you see cases where there are guys who go to JUCO first or division 2, II, division 3 and then eventually as their body matures transfer up to division one and then even go to the olympics or make their national teams so everyone's journey is going to be a little bit different and this is kind of one of those shout outs to those people who are more academic right now than they are athletic there are spots on d1 rosters for you and coaches do realize that okay this person might just be a late bloomer but keep in mind you still have to have the numbers to go along with it Maybe you might not be a state champion coming out of high school or a national champion, but you were at least in the top 10 in your event, maybe top 12 in the state, and probably somewhere in the 20s to 30s in the nation. So that's kind of what that's gonna look like for those individuals who are saying, ah, I have a 4.0 GPA, but I'm not winning state every single year. It's okay, you can still make the roster and do just fine. Have you ever considered asking for a tryout. I know that's not something that crosses a lot of people's mind, but I've seen it happen and I've seen people successfully do it. D1 programs are totally okay with people walking on. I think where things get a little bit snippy for most coaches is whenever people start asking for scholarship money. Most of us, let's just be honest, are gonna have to take out some sort of student loan. There are Division I athletes right now that are running top times in the country, but they're not on full scholarship just because those coaches are looking for the creme de la creme of athletes to give those full scholarships to because you only have, what, 12 and a half or 14 full scholarships, but you'll have maybe 30 to 40 people on one team. So if, you know, you're, you're kind of looking at your odds of getting money from a program and saying, uh, this might not be realistic. The next thing you need to do is just say, how about I walk on? How about I contact a coach, call them up, or just get into a university academically. Let's say that you go to University of Alabama just for academics, and then you walk up to the athletic center, you sit down with one of the coaches, which is totally fine. I'm, I'm sure 90% of these coaches would be totally okay with that because most of these people are really quality and great people. And just say, hey, here are my times. I didn't really get recruited a lot coming out of high school, but if you'd be willing to just give me a time trial or allow me to jump for you one day whenever you just have a little bit of time, maybe offer it during their preseason whenever they're not traveling every single weekend, I guarantee you most coaches will at least say, okay, if your time is close enough to what they're looking for for a walk-on, they'll give you that opportunity. And then it's your job from that point forward to put yourself in a mental state. Tell yourself, all right, I got this opportunity. Don't psych yourself out. Don't overthink it. Because I've had plenty of times in my life where my junior year, for example, I was getting recruited by Georgia Tech and they were looking to sign me as just an athlete. Not a receiver, not a, not a safety, not a quarterback. They were just gonna sign me as an athlete and then figure out where they could put me later. And I went to their 30 camp where they invited their top 30 juniors and I just psyched myself out. You know, I was definitely good enough to compete with those guys, but I just got in my own head. I got in my own way. And I think that looking back on it, one thing that I could have done is I could have just turned off my social media for a while. Just went into one of those periods, kind of like what LeBron and some of these NBA guys do, and they get away 
from their phone. They don't allow anyone around them to give any negative talk, negative energy. And whenever you get that tryout, that workout that you finally asked for, just go all in. Be focused. Give yourself mantras that you say every single day and tell yourself, I am the best. And you have to go at it with that mentality because division one is the best and you want to be the best. So tell yourself you're the best because you, you deserve that. Everybody's special. Everybody needs to, needs to give themselves the best opportunity to go and make that roster spot. So ask that coach for a tryout, go kill it and don't leave anything to question. Just go do it. The most success that I ever had whenever I was competing in high school in Division One, and then later as a professional athlete is whenever I took myself out of my phone, out of the comment section on IG and Twitter and all of those social media channels, and I started focusing on the thing that was most important, myself and my training and my rehab. Gabriella Cunningham, who's a good friend of mine, she just made the U.S. Olympic team, made the finals in the women's 100 hurdles for, for the U.S. Olympic team in Tokyo. She took herself off of social media for several months just so that she could put herself in the best position for U.S. trials and then eventually make the team and go on to have success. When I won my ACC championship in 2019 and I was competing against, you know, some of the guys who were top in the country, one thing that I made sure I did was I shut everything out for that period of time. If you are ever going into a state championship meet or you're ever going into a tryout for a coach or just any recruiting process, I would advise you to just take some time to step away from your phone, step away from the people that you think are cheering for you. Because I know that jealousy is real and a lot of people present themselves like they want the best for you, but really deep down, you know, that they're not necessarily wanting you to do better than them. Step away from all of that for a second and just say, for 90 days, for 60 days, I'm gonna focus on me. I'm gonna make sure that whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it to the best of my ability. And I'm not putting myself in a mental position to where I'm allowing all of the naysay and the noise to get to me. Because you see, everyone's human. The Kyle Kuzmas of the world and people who get traded off of NBA teams or NFL teams, whenever people are talking negatively on them in the social media section and things like that, it gets to them. We're all human. So to put yourself in a position so that you're not doubting yourself and you're actually putting your best foot forward, step off of social media for two or three months and see how much you gain in terms of performance. And then let me know if it worked for you because I've never ever in my life seen it not work for somebody. So let me know what you think. Going division one, getting scholarships, making those rosters is more mental than anything else. I've had more success in my career, not even from the training, but believing in the training and believing in myself and telling myself that I deserve to be here and that I am one of the best people on this track, in this country, in this state, wherever you are in the world. The mental game is probably the most important that young athletes, maybe even like yourself, underestimate. And I think a lot of you are watching this video and not realizing that you need the encouragement to go D1. And what I'm gonna tell you right now is that nobody is going to give it to you other than for me, because I'm more than happy to encourage you. I wanna see you succeed. I wanna see you do well. And yourself. You, at the end of the day, are going to go as far as your mental takes you. The Kobe's, the MJ's, the LeBron's, the Naheem Hines, who's my good friend running back for the Indianapolis Colts. They are where they are today because at some point along their journey, they told themselves, you know, I deserve to be here. I might not be on full scholarship or partial scholarship, or I might not be one of the best in my state right now, but I am, and I'm going to be. So my big advice for you on how you're gonna go D1 is conquer the mental game. Make sure that every single day you're saying your mantras, you're saying your prayers, you're writing down in your journal, whatever it takes for you to convince yourself that you are division one caliber because your body is not gonna go where your mind hasn't already been. So take yourself there.
and you'll thank yourself. One thing that I notice amongst young athletes is that a lot of them think that they have to go Division I straight out of high school. But really, I see a lot of athletes that need one or two more years of development because track is a journey. It's not just something that overnight happens for a lot of people. So don't be afraid to go Division Three, Division Two, JUCO for the first two years and then use the athletic portal to transfer into Division One. One thing that my father always told me whenever I was younger is go where you are wanted, not where you want to go. Because more often than not, I see people go Division I early, either as a walk-on or they're trying to rush their own process in life. And before you know it, you get cut off the team. Oftentimes people think that the hardest part is getting to Division I, but I would make the argument the hardest part is actually staying in Division I. So you'll know whenever a coach actually wants you. You'll know just by their mannerisms, by the way that they talk to your parents, just the entire interaction from beginning to end. You're gonna feel it deep down. So go to that place where they're offering you the most scholarship money or the greatest opportunities for success. And then whenever you're ready and your performance is up to par, transfer into Division I because it is the most cutthroat division in the entire country and there's always going to be that next man up mentality on your team your coach is always going to be looking for the next person to replace you not because it's anything against you but just because that's their job and they have families to feed as well so don't take that personal but also remember everyone's journey is going to be a little bit different so make sure that you're not opposed to going to a smaller level and then bouncing up to D1 whenever you're actually ready for it. A lot of young athletes don't understand this, but track and field is a quality sport. It's not a quantity sport. I'm someone who struggles from this probably the worst. You know, you have those athletes who just want it so bad that they go out every single day and they're killing themselves and they're always training in a deficit and you know, you're waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning and going to bed at midnight because maybe you're academics or whatever and you're just burning yourself at both ends of the candlestick but you have to remember as much as you're training in track and field is how much you need to be sleeping as much as you're training is how much you need to be eating we it, it doesn't make any sense for you to put in 60 miles a week on your body or do 10 by 200 workouts, then 10 by 300, 10 by 400 workouts, five, six days a week, and then you're not allowing your body enough time to recover. You and, and especially if you're a jumper, for my jumpers out there who are doing plyometrics and things that are just neurologically taxing on your body, Give yourself some time. I know it's gonna drive you crazy. I know that you know you have to you tell yourself, oh, I have to have an apex mentality when it comes to training. I have to get out there and just do, 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 do. But eventually that works against you. And that's one thing that I had to learn really late in my collegiate career. And one of the reasons it took me so long to become an ACC champion is because as a decathlete, I was training multiple events. I was out on the track five hours a day, six hours a day. And then as I got older, I realized, oh, you don't need to do that. All you have to do is just maybe get in an hour and a half, two, three hours a day of quality work. And then for the rest of the day, fuel your body, make sure you're going to bed early and doing the things that are going to allow that workout to actually pay off. Because if you're just burning yourself at both ends of the candlestick, and I'm gonna keep saying that, then you're never allowing those muscle fibers to repair. So it's very important for you young athletes to realize, yes, if you want to go division one, you have to have a division one mentality and work ethic. You should be in the gym all the time. You should be running on the track and all those things. But you have to taper yourself properly. You have to make sure that you're eating right, getting your sleep. and. Just quality over quantity is gonna put you miles ahead of most people, and this is why. Because those athletes that are overworking themselves are always gonna be injured, so they're never gonna hit that PR, and then, you know, train, 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 and then hit that next PR, and train, train, train. They're just gonna be, you know, trying to get back in shape coming off injury, get back in shape coming off injury, and that doesn't help anybody. So it's better for you to get on the track, in all honesty, undertrained, then overtrained. 
because you're not at a risk for injury and you're not uh, putting yourself in a position where your battery is already empty. So you're not gonna be able to run a 400 hurdles or do a decathlon or those things because your neurological system is shocked. So keep in mind, make sure that you're training quality, not quantity. Make sure that you're eating right, getting your sleep and your performance, as long as you continuously stay healthy, is gonna naturally go up just as you get stronger, bigger, and faster. Email coaches, email, email, email. Make sure that you are in their inbox all the time. The unfortunate thing about there being 330 million people in the US, seven billion people in the world, and Division One programs recruiting everyone from everywhere, is that coaches are going through a bunch of statistics and stats all the time. So if you can put yourself in a position to build a relationship, even just, you know, one or two phone calls or one or two emails back and forth, that is going to put you just head and shoulders above most people. Because one mistake that I made coming out of high school is that I was expecting just people to come to me. And yes, they do if your numbers are good enough, but oftentimes you can still have good numbers, but get overlooked simply because there's just so many people out there trying to get on those, you know, 30, 40 man roster spots. So make sure that you're putting yourself in the best position to build relationships with Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three coaches so that at least they'll know you by name and, you know, whenever they're thinking about filling those spots they might just think about you. In track and field, you do not have to be the biggest person on the track. It helps, it helps if you're a shot putter, discus thrower, and your bench is amazing. Javelin thrower, your bench is amazing. But for the sprinting events, for those events that are more focused on your lower extremities, I would say that the four things you need to focus on most are abs, plyometrics, squats, and power cleans. If you can do those four things consistently and see continual gain in the weight room and be able to transfer it over to the track, you're gonna be head and shoulders above most people. I'm old school. I come from a program, Thomas Wood, who's at NC State, and we don't overcomplicate things. We're not trying to you know, be the most just all over the place and trying to do these crazy workouts with balls and bubble this and that and the other. If you can consistently just improve your squat, improve your power clean, your abs are tight, strong, your core has strength, and then you're doing plyometrics and being able to transfer what you're doing in the weight room into an explosive way through your body, you are gonna be just fine staving off injury and other things like that. But if you could focus on those four things, and really it's, it's easy to find a lot of workouts for those four things on YouTube. And I know that there are tons of division one coaches putting their workouts and stuff on Instagram. You can definitely go on University of Virginia and look up some of um, those coaches putting their workouts out there and just find stuff that's gonna help you along the way. But don't overcomplicate your workouts. Stick to things that you know are going to actually apply direct, directly onto the track. And don't, you know, just don't follow these crazy people on YouTube telling you to do a bunch of different tire flips and, you know, do deadlifts until your back gives out and stuff like that. No, no, don't, don't, don't do that stuff. Just stick to the basics and be consistent and good at them and you'll see it transfer over to the track. That is all that I have for you all today. Okay, so I'm not actually done with the video. I'm not gonna just leave you with nine tips. If you've made it with me this far, please do not forget to like, comment, subscribe. And that is more so because of the algorithm. That's not because I care about those metrics. So tip number 10 in terms of how to go division one. Typically what you see is you see two types of athletes coming out of high school. The first type is an athlete who's very technically sound and they have great form whenever it comes to going over hurdles or pole vaulting or in the throws. Or you have another type of athlete who's just extremely gifted in terms of talent. Their technique might not be the best, but no matter what they're doing on the track, they're destroying everybody. I want you to ask yourself, what type of athlete are you? Are you the first who's very technically sound or are you the latter? Because if you're the latter, the very first thing that you can do to improve your game is just work on your technique. If you're extremely gifted as an athlete but have poor technique, by 
kind of balancing out your weaknesses, it just elevates your game overall. Where if you're the first type of athlete who's been spending 30, 40 hours a week just repping technique and making sure that you are just like picture perfect in terms of sprint form or going over hurdles, then what I want you to do is be working on your just overall athleticism. If you're a great pole vaulter with great technique, but you're not necessarily fast on the runway, then you should be working on your sprint speed. Or if you're someone who has really great high jump form and great arch because let's say you've been doing yoga, but you're not super explosive, then work on your plyometrics. So no matter what type of high school athlete you are, whether it be really technically sound or just a freak of nature, there are still things that you can work on in your track and field game that are gonna raise your level. All right, that's all my tips for you today. If that was helpful, please let me know. My name is Grant Rivers, this is The River's Edge, and I will catch you in the next one.